Doppelganger. Hello everyone, this is NS Alters, and today we'll be answering the age-old question of who killed Laura Palmer? We'll start off by covering up the edges with our thin masking tape, and then covering the text box with uh, just some regular masking tape. And then to make sure that we aren't missing anything and to make the rounder edges nice and crisp, we're going to use our liquid latex masking fluid and just painting those over the areas where the tape didn't quite cover and also to cover up the gaps between tape. Once that dries, we can go prime it. And then with the primer, you can just peel. Oh, oh God. Right. So we're going to uh, use that as our reference image there. And uh, we can just tape on the picture that I made up in Photoshop. Fantastic. So you can see that it's a picture with graphite paper layered over top of the primed card. And then we're just going to trace out the shape so that we can get the placement of things. You could spend, you know, an hour or so sketching out the dimensions, but this just saves a bunch of time. And in the end, we're going to be painting in the details anyways, so it's not really cheating. Look, it doesn't even look that good. So now we can beautify it. So we're going to use our gray paint to work out a bit more of a priming area. You can see that uh, before I started applying these details that I had scraped off a bit of the paint at the top and reapplied gray paint. Uh, that's because where the primer met with the tape, there's a bit of an edge. And so kind of like sanding it down, I was just making the transition a little more smooth so that you wouldn't see it in the finished product. I'm starting off with dark shadows, blocking out where the darkest parts of the card are going to be. And I do that first because uh, now that I'm adding, you know, some brighter colors some pinks for the lips and such, uh, the darker shadows will still show through. So I can block out the colors and the general placement of things without losing any detail. So here you can see I'm adding in the skin and I'm actually painting over top of those shadows, but they still show through. Then we got the hair, the basic clothing, and I generally like to block out the entire card just so that, you know, my brain kind of has an idea of where I'm going with it and I can better visualize the end product while I'm working. Of course, I'm also looking at a reference photo this entire time that I have right beside me just off screen, constantly checking that and really, you know, double checking everything to make sure that is this shadow really where it is? It's those types of tiny details that'll make the difference between something really looking like what you're painting and, you know, well, I guess it kind of looks like that, you know, it's fine. And so it really is just a struggle of uh, how much you want that to be perfect and how precise you want it to be. So you'll see as this goes on, we skip ahead here just a little bit and uh, I'd added some details, tiny amounts here and there, and it's really starting to come together now, really starting to kind of look like how we want it. And the trickiest part about painting faces, especially the face of a young woman, uh, is that the transitions are generally very, very subtle, very smooth. Uh, her skin is very uh, round and soft and uh, r relatively wrinkle-free. And even that jowl that's pronounced through her scream, you have to really tone it down because if it's too thick, then it's going to look awkward. It's going to make her look older than she is. That's going to look ugly, essentially. Uh, and we really want to capture the true image of the original shot from the show. So really toning it down, painting in thin layers over top of those shadowy areas so that we get just the right amount of definition. And at this point, I was relatively happy with the face. I do come back and touch up a few things here and there, but let's just start really blocking in the background. So for some really nice contrast, I went with just a solid black on the background so that, you know, it has even more contrast with her coat sleeves. And then the curtains in the Black Lodge are a very vibrant red. So we just used pure red straight from the source and put that on there. And then we blended it down with that same black we were using on the other side. So here you can see I'm adding more highlights. I'm blending the jowl shadow just a little bit more. It was a little too pronounced. And I'm also blending the jawline 
into her neck a little bit more so that that's also not as aggressive. It looks a little better. Now with the hair, uh, she has blonde hair, so we're really going to start off kind of with a, a grayish yellow, uh, grayish brown, and then applying on highlights and then more highlights and then brighter highlights each time, building up the glow and the definition uh, that you would see there. So even just at this stage, it looks all right, but you'll see as more highlights get added on, the hair just gets more definition, feels more voluminous. So when you're painting your hair, uh, always just work in tons and tons of little layers. Try to paint every individual strand if you can when you're working into these highlights. And it really makes a difference in the end. The last step, once you're happy with the art, is to just clean up the edges. I'm using a pick from 3D printing material. It's a nice soft plastic. And then to clean up the edges using a ruler and a fine tipped marker, I'm just adding a black border around the text box. And for a little bit of flair at the bottom, I have three things for you that will come true. There is a man in a smiling bag. The owls are not what they seem. And without chemicals, he points. The last step is to sign my initials, and we're done. And there is this one doppelganger ready for Judy. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. If you want to see me alter a specific card, leave a comment down below. As always, thanks for watching and have a good day.